Well, good afternoon, everybody. Millionaires, uh, that's what I'm going to talk about today. And already for, for several years, I uh, was very curious about the generosity of the very wealthy because they have the potential to actually uh, give a lot, but it's at the same time very difficult to get access to them. And therefore, it took me also like a couple of years to actually finally get access to a large group of millionaires. So, um, together with uh, Rob Bauer and Ulrich Miesi, we um, actually contacted the bank. And this is a private bank of which all the clients have at least 1 million euro in their bank account. And uh, the bank allowed us to run some experiments with these millionaire clients. And this gives us uh, like a little bit of the first type of, of, of insights into the giving behavior of this kind of, uh, of special group. So it's definitely not the whole story. I think there is lots still to research in, in, in the area of, of the uh, giving of these millionaires. But these are some, like I think, some quite interesting first uh, insights. So I want to start with showing you that in the Netherlands, on average, people donate 200 euro to charity. So now uh, I want to shake you up a little bit after lunch uh, to get some interaction going on. So just shout what do you expect that the average Dutch millionaire is going to give to charity? Also, I hear also 200. <laughs> That's great. So you have just like 10 times much more money or 100 more times and you give exactly the same. Other one thousand. Now it's eleven thousand two hundred. So it's substantially more. But now the, the, the question obviously is: Okay, they, they have more, so they can also give more. So now we, we might want to express this as a percentage of what they make, so as a percentage of their income. And now we see. Uh, by the way, these numbers are based on, on a study of, of uh, the Nate Beckers from the, the Dutch uh, Giving in the Netherlands uh, research. So here we see that in the Netherlands of the, the whole uh, of the income, the average Dutch person gives about 1% of their income annually to charity. Looking at the millionaires, 3.3%. So this is just... <coughs> These, these lower numbers from the men as they come directly out of, of our study. And so they, they, this is... How come it's 3%, 10,000? Oh, no, this is, it. this is a percentage of their income. Well, but the income, if that's multiplied times for 11,000... The, the men as on average have about 300,000 euros of income. And the 0 0.9 is a percentage of the income of the, of the average person. Okay, I, I can come back to that. No, but if it's 3 and 3, it should be 33,000 at least. Am I right? No. Now, I, I can, at, at the end, I can tell you exactly how we calculate all this for the interest of time. I, I like to continue. Um, so, we, I will be talking about Dutch, Dutch millionaires today. And this is, a, this is a building in The Hague, in the Netherlands, where we have the, the Freedom Palace. And that was built, oh, and, and it was the, the, the one who actually gave money to build this was Carnegie Mellon. Carnegie Mellon was one of the richest persons who has ever lived. He not only built the Carnegie Mellon University, but also more than 1,000 libraries worldwide, and this Freedom Palace in the Hague. And over his whole life he gave 90% of all his money away to charity. And another famous example is Mark Zuckerberg, who joined the Giving Pledge to donate at least half of their wealth to, to charity. So we do see that rich people are kind of important in terms of giving, because looking at the, at the Dutch case again, we see that actually 80% of all the donations is coming from the 20% bigger donators. So in other words, if we can motivate these really rich people to give, there is lots, lots to gain. So this um, uh, stimulated us to, to find out what motivates wealthy people to be generous. And in our experiment, we actually have 633 millionaires that participated. We have them 
uh, participating in different treatments, which I'm going to uh, show you in a second. And on average, they have 4.7 million of wells in their bank account. Quite a substantial amount of money. And what we did with the, with the first group of those people, so we did between subjects, I'm going to show you first one treatment which was a dictator game. And here we um, had two participants. So we had a millionaire and we had a person with a low income. So the person with the low income has less than 12,500 <coughs> euro income per year. The millionaire has one million euro <coughs> at least free money available in the bank account. And then what we did is we gave the millionaire 100 euro. And we asked the millionaire how much to, uh, because the, the low income person got nothing, so we asked the, the millionaire how much to give to the low income person. And if Francis got, gave 50, then, so we, we paid both of them uh, 50 euro by a bank transfer and we worked with an independent company that was in between the transactions so that we could actually guarantee that everything was anonymous so that nobody ever would find out um, what, what the millionaire was giving and that was also what we told the millionaire in the instruction. So they knew that whatever they would do, even if they would take the 100, nobody would ever find out. So, how much would you give? You have 100 euro that you can distribute between yourself and somebody else, but what would you do? Typically, people give 28%. But this is based on a meta-analysis study of Christoph Engel in 2011. So he analyzed more than 100 of these so-called dictator games. And he finds that on average, people give about 28% of the money. So in our case of this one hundred euro, the millionaires would give 28 euro. And now the question is, we saw in the beginning of, I, I showed you that the average Dutch person donates 200 euro per year, but the millionaire donates 11,000 euro per year, so it gives substantially more. But there could be all kinds of reasons why the millionaire is doing that. Maybe he just wants to be seen as very generous by other people. In, in this experiment, remember, everything is, is anonymous, nobody finds out. So now the question is, in this context, are people still uh, going to give a lot of money. Yes, they do. They give away 71% of the 100 euro to the person with the low income. And this is actually um, the, the highest amount, uh, highest percentage of the, the amount we have seen in the literature so far. So I did one of one of the different studies. No, no, wherever did we see this large amount of giving as, as we observe with the millionaires. So this is just the averages, so what about the distribution? Well, here we see that about 20% uh, of the millionaires, they uh, actually decided to, to do a 50-50 split. In the, in the whole population, this is much more. Many more people give 50%. But what we really see is that almost half of the millionaires give away the full 100 euro. And the interesting thing is that here we have 10% of selfish millionaires. So 10% decides to keep the whole 100 euro for themselves. And this 10% of selfish people is, is quite common in the literature. So in most dictator game studies, you see 10% of the people are selfish, keep the full amount. So in that respect, the number of uh, thank you, selfish people is kind of the, the same in our context. Okay. So we had one little treatment in which we, again, have the millionaire match to a low-income person, but now the millionaire is going to negotiate about the money rather than like a very simple bargaining situation eh? uh, compared to just giving. So um, we have, again, the millionaire having one of the euro, now proposes an amount to the low-income person, so say again 50, then if the low-income person accepts this offer, they both get paid 50. But now suppose the millionaire decides just to, uh, to offer 10 and the low-income person rejects, then they both end up with nothing. And when do the millionaires give more? In the giving or in the bargaining situation? Well, typically we see in the literature that in the 
bargaining situation in this ultimatum game, people give more. Because now there is the fear that the other person can actually reject the offer and you end up with less. What do we see here? Here again, uh, the, the picture that you saw from the dictator game. And now we see that once we change from giving to simple bargaining, now more millionaires actually give 50 and less give the full amount. And this is consistent with the idea that a millionaire who gives quite a lot to charity goes on holiday to a developing country buy something on the market there from a clearly poor person, but it's bargaining down the price. So once you shift the mindset from clear giving to negotiation, bargaining, they actually give less. So in a nutshell here we, we see the millionaires match to a low income person and give more in this dictator game than in the ultimatum game. If we have the millionaire match to another millionaire, there is no treatment effect. Obviously, millionaires give more to somebody with a low income than to, to another millionaire. And here, and this is, this is interesting, here you see what typically happens in the literature. So here you see again, in the literature, people give more in the ultimatum game, but we really flip this around. So once it's about helping somebody else, then people give more in the clear giving situation than when it's about bargaining. So what is results to be expected? Not really, because so far with student experiments, it has been shown actually that students who are rich, they give less in this game. So we show that once you move away from students to the actually rich people, the results completely change. And also, if, if you look in terms of giving in the US, here the, the rich people, they give a smaller percentage of their income to charity than poor people. In the Netherlands, we see the opposite way. The, the rich give a higher percentage. And this is particularly interesting, given that the rich in the Netherlands already have a quite high tax bracket. They have a 52% income tax. So on top of that, they also give more to charity. So in a, in a nutshell, um, millionaires give more than average, and this in particularly holds in a clear giving situation compared to a bargaining situation. And if I translate this back to the bank, so what does the bank take from this? Now think about offering a microfinance product. You can phrase this microfinance product as either uh, an investment product, more business, or as, as a charity product um, with the chance to get some money back. And this is actually the next thing on, on my research agenda is to run a field experiment to, to actually test the, this prediction. So this was my part and I'm looking forward to, uh, to your questions. So we have time for one or two questions. Yeah, so, sorry, I said I indeed said that. Well, it's actually even, it's actually even, it, it's a U shape and then it goes like, it, it's a really weird distribution. So if you look at the US, like the, the poorest, they give quite a lot, the middle give less, and then the rich give even less, but then the extremely rich give again even more. But one of the problems is that you're doing it out of earned income. Some of those studies become very different if you include all incomes. So I think you might want to. So, so, sorry, what did you say? I think part of the problem is how you define income. So there are a number of older people who have limited earned income, um, but still very wealthy. And I think some of those odd behaviors in the percentage given is coming from sort of older people who are very generous but have low earned income. So I think you want to be a little bit careful. Yes, so remember, for the experiment, we don't look at income, right? We look at the wealth they have in the bank account. So all of our participants have at least 1 million euro in their bank account. That was our definition. And on average, they have 4.7. The only time I talked about income was as expressing the, the, uh, the amount of money they give as a percentage of income. And there I agree with you that it's a bit hard on how, how we define income. So 
and that might also vary depending on studies. So we need to have to be careful there. <coughs> Mine's a simple question, just in terms of, uh, I guess, you know, the, the, the idea of a hundred dollars, the, you know, the, what what that means for a millionaire, uh, or I'm sorry, a hundred euro, like what, that that's like loose change in my pocket. I, I guess I'm just curious how that was sort of factored in, you know, in the sense of that as a as a way of a, really attributing their behaviors and philanthropy. You know what I'm saying? But, right. You know, just yeah. curious how, how you thought about it. Yeah, so what you say is probably it's very easy for the millionaire to give the money away. So that, that's true. And if, if you look at the open questions of why people give, uh, so some of them indeed actually say, well, the, the euro for me is not much. But others say, uh, and uh, well, I can buy nice stuff with this one on the tour. So for instance, they give a 50-50 spin in the dictator game and they write down, oh, now I can buy something nice and the other person can buy something nice. So it's, it's the one and two who still can buy them a nice bottle of wine or what not. So, and they, 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 so the, the fact that they, it's easy for them to give doesn't necessarily mean that they also give. I mean, we saw with the, with the, the study that, um, uh, that was conducted in Berkeley with the students that they're actually the opposite pattern. It was the, the, the richer students who could also afford giving more, they give actually less. And even there, uh, the rich people, the rich students, they cheat more for, for one piece of candy than the, 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 the poor students. So that incentives are even smaller. So, but I, I would love to, I mean, if, if uh, there are donors in, in the room here who can say, well, I, I give you the bigger stakes, that would, of course, be really great to, uh, to do this. Yeah. How much did the experiment cost? The, uh, in the experiment we paid 1 out of 10 participants. Uh, so I skipped some of the details just because of the, 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 the time wise. Uh, so we paid 1 out of 10, this 100 euros times the 633 participants. Yeah. Yeah. You know on the uh, giving, so the tax rate is 52%, correct? That's right. Okay, so if you kept the hundred euros. That's it, if, if I kept if I kept the hundred euros, I'd have to get fifty two dollars back to the government. Correct? No. In this experiment, if you give if you get money from a scientific experiment, you don't pay taxes. Okay. <laughs> no. I, I, you know, okay, but thank you. obviously, they can get tax benefits out of the money they donate to charity. But there is the case that the first one percent they can not deduct. And above this 1%, they can deduct the money uh, uh, at the 52% tax rate from charity. Yeah. So thank you. We need to move on to the next speaker.